Pioneer viewers, how are you doing? I hope you're healthy and well. As the Pioneer team, we continue to bring you developments of Russia-Ukraine war to your screens. In a moment, we will analyze the latest developments on the front line with a map. When we look at the latest reports, we see that the situation on the front line has become more complicated. In fact, it is quite difficult to follow the front line and catch new updates. Because there are both no new developments and there are many new developments. We say that there are no new developments because the, because the border changes between the two armies are quite small. And there are new developments because the fighting between the two armies takes place in different areas every day. For example, the day before yesterday, there were not many noteworthy developments on the Kherson front line. However, the Kherson front line was quite active today. We are here to bring you the latest developments on this complex front line. Let's take a look at the latest developments together. Before I start our report, I need to make a small reminder. As a pioneer team, we continue to bring you the latest developments regarding Russia Ukraine war. Please, please, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss our daily map reports and reports on the agenda. I also read all your comments on our videos. Please continue to express your opinions about our content in the comments. Let's start if you are ready. The Pioneer reports. Let's start with the Kherson front line. As you know, the main focus of the fighting here has always been cranky. In recent days, the activity here has decreased. According to some reports, units of the Russian armed forces have regained control again around cranky. Frankly, I think that the veracity of these reports should be questioned because most of these reports are published by the Russian sources. Although that the Russian sources are reporting that the Russian army has regained control in Krinky, they are not yet provided any visual confirmation. So without visual confirmation, it would not be correct to say that the Russian troops are in control here. Ukrainian sources, on the other hand, deny these allegations. Some sources even share images showing that the Ukrainian marines are still in Krinky. From this point of view, we can say that the statements coming from Ukraine are more accurate because there are visual confirmations in the claims of the Ukrainian sources. The reports we have received on the artillery activity in the region also shows that the Ukrainian troops are still in control of Krinky. This is because, according to the latest reports, artillery units of the Russian armed forces targeted Ukrainian armed forces units, the stations in Krinky, Antonivka, Kherson, and Bilizerka. On the other hand, artillery units of the Ukrainian armed forces targeted Olapristan, Oleshke, Kohani, and Novakohovka. So now let's continue by analyzing the latest developments in the rebooting sector of the Zaporizhia front line. Again, according to the latest reports, the Russian armed forces continue their offensives in the rebooting sector of the Zaporizhia front line, and according to our sources in the region, units of the Russian armed forces continued their offensives to the west and the south of the village of Robotin today. It is reported that the Russian military carried out intensive aerial bombardment during these attacks. However, the Ukrainian armed forces continue to test themselves successfully in the region and the attacks of the Russian army failed here again. In addition, as I mentioned in our previous reports, the Russian army was active in the Verbov direction and the latest reports from the region indicate that the Russian armed forces have increased their pressure on Verbov. Although the intensity of the fighting has decreased, there was heavy shelling. However, there are no results and the Ukrainian armed forces troops continue to hold their positions. According to reports, there have been no changes on the Demarcasia line in the Robotin sector of the Zaporizhia front line. Let me continue with artillery activity in the region. According to the latest reports, artillery units of the Russian armed forces targeted units of the Ukrainian armed forces stations in Robotin, Malaitok Makcha, and Orykhiv line. In turn, artillery units of the Ukrainian armed forces targeted units of the Russian armed forces stations in Kopani, Novoprokopivka, and Verbov. Let's continue with the latest developments in the Vuheldar sector of the Zaporizhia front line. According to the latest reports, the Russian armed forces have again intensified their offensives north of Priyotny today. There is an intense shelling in the area and the infantry of the Russian armed forces is actively participating in the fighting. However, the situation is quite stable and the Ukrainian defenses in the area are still holding positions. Now let me continue with artillery activity in the region. According to the latest reports, units of the Russian armed forces targeted Ukrainian armed forces positions north of Yurkhain and Priyodny. In turn, units of the Ukrainian armed forces targeted units of the Russian armed forces stations in Zavitny Bajania. Now, let's continue with the latest developments on the Donetsk front line. According to the latest reports, units of the Russian armed forces attacked Novomikhailovka from the south, east, and northeast. The Ukrainian armed forces units are holding the positions in a circular defense. So far, no Russian military advances have been recorded here. 
On the other hand, Russian troops' offensives in the Pobeda and Gorogorivka area has also failed. However, there is an advance south of town of Gorogorivka. So here, the defenseless positions of the Ukrainian armed forces are not as strong as on the eastern approaches, but nevertheless, resistance continues. Also north of Avdivka, units of the Russian armed forces are trying to enter Semenkoivka. They are tactically successful, and in parallel, there is an attempt to advance towards Berdyachi. The loss of these two settlements will cut off the rocket logistics of the Ukrainian armed forces, and therefore, the line here needs to be well protected. Now let's continue with the Bakhmut front line. According to the latest reports, units of the Russian armed forces are attacking the hills northwest of Klishchivka, Ivanivsky, and Bogdanovka. We have already mentioned earlier, the most important target of the Russian army here at the moment is the Ukrainian army's fortification in Kasovyar. Although the Russian army is trying to advance here, there has been no significant changes in the borderline. Let's also look at the artillery activity in the region. According to reports, artillery units of the Russian armed forces targeted Kasovyar, Avonivsky, and Klishchivka. In contrast, artillery units of the Ukrainian armed forces targeted Bakhmut town center Yahidny and Romov. Let's continue with the latest developments on the Luhansk front line. According to the latest reports, on the Luhansk front line, units of the Russian armed forces launched attacks near Yampoliivka, Ternivka, Tabiivka, and Sinkivka. The intensity of the fighting here is decreasing. Both armies seem to be testing each other's strength, and according to the latest reports, there have been no significant changes on the border line. So, what do you think? What do you think is the reason for the stagnation on the front line? And do you think the Russian army will be able to advance on the Zaporizhia front line? Do you think that the Russian army will be able to continue advancing on the Donetsk front line? Or what do you think about the Kasovyar on the Bakhmut front line? Write it down in the comments because you know that I read and I really care about all of your comments. Два двести. Али двести. Али. Tell Vargas we need more rockets for the RPG. 